Hello everyone, as you may or may not know, I recently made a tutorial showing you how to use RiftCat, a program that can turn an Android phone into a Steam VR headset. Unfortunately, shortly after I made the video, RiftCat got a huge update called RiftCat 2.0. In today's video, I will be showing you how to use RiftCat 2.0 to turn your phone into a VR headset. What you will need is an Android phone, preferably newer and higher end running Android 5.0 or higher. I will be using my Nexus 6 here. You will also need a Google Cardboard headset. Uh, these are usually really cheap and can be found for around 20 US dollars. Here's what I will be using. And of course, you will need a computer that can run Steam VR. Okay, so first, what you will need to do is go to your phone and go to the Google Play Store. And then search V-Ridge. The first thing you will see is V-Ridge Classic, but this is uh, for the old version of V-Ridge that I showed you in my last video. What you want to find is scroll down and you want to download V-Ridge 2.0. Install it. Then after this, open it up, and you should get kind of a VR interface looking like this. And it says that it's connecting to the RiftCat application. So set your phone aside and then move on to your computer. All right. So on your computer, go to the first link that I have in the description, and it will take you to this website, RiftCat.com. Scroll down a little bit and click this big blue download button. And you will see a file called RiftCat Installer. Just save this to your desktop or download somewhere you can access it easily. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to click Save. So it should look something like this once you download it. It should be blue. Double click it and run it. Click Accept. Accept. Install. Yes. And it's a really quick process, so that now just click Start RiftCat. Click I Accept. And you will see the loading screen, and any second now, it will pop up to a page like this. It's a lot more simplistic than the previous version. So these are the two kinds of ways that you can connect to the app on your phone and the most reliable way is usb and that means that your phone will be tethered to your computer via a usb cable so just grab a usb cable and plug your phone into your computer and then what you will need to do after this is go to the settings in your phone And for me, uh, it's under more tethering and portable hotspot and then USB tethering. You want to find USB tethering and make sure to turn it on. And then jump back over to the VRidge application and make sure to turn on airplane mode on your phone. It's kind of thundering outside right now. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> All right, you might get a notification on your phone. Uh, just click no for that. It should ask you, is that your phone? You click yes, and it'll connect. And here we go. Here's the V-Ridge 2.0 interface here. So up at the top, you can see uh, it says free five minutes. So that means this is a trial application. So you can only use it for three minutes at a time. However, if you log in with a V-Ridge or a RiftCat account, you can get that up to 10 minutes, you can get an additional 5 minutes, and however, if you pay for the program, you get unlock unlimited time, of course. So I'm just going to log in real quick, just type in your information if you have a login. Okay, then after this, the process is pretty straightforward. Just click this play button here, and the first option will be play Steam VR. You could also play using old SDK, which I believe 
uh, you won't need to worry about it. If you're using this for Steam VR, just click the big blue button here. Preparing the stream. We are loading up here, and so the phone is loading. Steam VR should say ready, and it should eventually load up this Steam VR home page. Uh, it'll take a few minutes, and you could change the quality of the stream um, on the fly, as it says. So you could up the quality or change the quality. I think that changes everything from the bit rate to uh, your resolution but I'm not entirely sure exactly what that does. And there's also another cool option here, this toggle with the little music icon. That is to toggle audio streaming. So you could turn that on, and now it'll stream the audio from your computer to your phone. So that's another pretty cool option. All right, so as you can see, the VR, Steam VR homepage is loaded up. And now I'm going to end the stream and show you how to connect wirelessly. So if you want to collect, connect wirelessly, just unplug your computer from your phone, click or turn back on airplane mode on your phone, and click Wi-Fi for connection type. It'll ask you this again, click yes. There we go, we are connected wirelessly. So I'm just going to click the play button to show you it'll work. The fans on my computer are really kicking up now, or actually going out a little bit. Okay, and Steam VR Home is loaded again on my phone. So what I can do now, just to show you, um, is you can put your phone in this thing, in this little headset here. There, for the most part, you got a. Uh, fully functional uh, VR headset. So, uh, what you want to do if this is the first time doing this, go down to the Steam VR window here, click the little arrow, and click Run Room Setup. This will just calibrate it. So click Standing Only. Click Next. And now just do what this says, just hold this in front of your computer, and click Calibrate Center, and then click Next. And then for this, Calibrate Floor. So what you want to do, you want to find a decent height, um, say like a height, say like the average height of the average person in inches or centimeters. So I believe I'm just going to put in 70, or no. I'm just going to put in 65 inches. Then just set it on your desk and click Calibrate Floor. And then click Next. And you should be good to go. And click Done. So then Steam VR Home should load back up again. Uh, the quality of the video stream isn't that good. And that's because I'm on a wireless 2.4 GHz connection. I'm also recording on my computer and my phone, which might cause it to lag a little more. So if you're doing wireless, which is the more unstable option, you want to make sure you have a strong connection to a 5 GHz network. But the preferred option would be tethered your computer via USB. So just to show you this can actually play a game, I'm going to load up something here. So just go to your Steam library, just like you normally would. And then the only VR game I have is VR Chat, so I'm just going to show you that it will work. So I'm going to load this up. The fans are very loud, I know, that's because I'm recording on my phone or my computer uh, while running Griffcat and VRChat. Fans are going to kick up even more here. But as you can see, again, it's a little laggy. Don't worry about that. You'll be fine. So, okay, as you can see, now we are in a world, the hub world, on VRChat. And I'm moving my phone, and it's responding on the computer just like it's a VR headset. All right, so that is pretty much it. That is Riftcat 2.0. It's a neat little application. I hope you'll be able to get some use out of it. Uh, if you have any questions on how it works or uh, any issues that you run across, just make sure to ask me in the comments. I will get back to those. 
and yeah thank you so much for watching and i look forward to making more videos in the near future <laughs> i will see you in the next one